Brothers and sisters, if you don't pray, long life is not your portion. Prayerless Christian are Christian who cannot live and fulfill their days here on earth. Weakness in prayer is equal to weakness in life. Living without prayer is moving closer to the grave day by day. Satan is determined to kill, steal, and destroy. It takes your consistency in prayer to live your days here on earth. You are just living your life. Wake up in the morning and say, no, Jesus died on the cross. I am going to live. Even the Jesus that died on the cross is still praying. For him to be praying is already a sign for you that there is a warfare going on. The Bible said the kingdom of God suffered violent. He said only the violent get their portion by prayers. You shall not die even declare You know what I'm saying both God and Satan is hearing me you to hear me if God and Satan is hearing me and they obey why don't you hear write it down for your safety my prophet has said it there shall be no loss Paul tell them he said listen to me who will arrive safely there shall be what no loss as far as this year is concerned I stand with integrity of God who call me I am not walking by idea it is not by suggestion i hear in my voice there shall be no loss there shall be no loss man of god my husband is currently sick my husband is sick my children are sick everybody is sick let me tell you whoever that is sick at the instant of my voice now i say they are healed I shall not die, but leave and declare the words of the Lord. Amen. Let us add everybody name now. We shall not die. At the roadmap to Jesus International Ministry. Leave and declare. God does not take pleasure in your debts. Isaiah 65 and verse 20. Let me show you a scripture now. He said, Never again will there be in it an infancy who live but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his what? His years. I am speaking from the scripture. He said, No more again. No more. No more burying people two, two years in my family. Maybe the last two years you buried person and now you are afraid again. It's almost two years and every interval we used to bury people. I said no more again. Ezekiel 18 and verse 32. Listen to this. This is God speaking to someone. He said, for I have no pleasure in what? Oh... So if God does not want you to die, someone wants you to die. And that is not God. I have no pleasure in your sickness. We live when we turn to God. God has no pleasure in your sickness. God has no pleasure in killing you. God wants you to fulfill your days. God does not want you to be alive and live prematurely. Let me tell you, when we talk about long life, we are not saying it because we just want to stay here on earth. Do you know that there are many people today who leave responsibility for their wives because they die before their time? Who leave responsibility for their husband because they die before their time? There are many people today who leave responsibility for the first time because the parents 
die before their time. There are many people you are supposed to have helped. Many that are supposed to be helped today. Their destiny helpers die before their time. That will not be your portion. I say it will not be your portion. You are not living out of here. You are living to fulfill the glory of God. He said, I will not die but live to declare the goodness and the glory of God in my life. You won't leave your responsibility for someone else. No. Jesus said, it is finished. That is, I have done the work. It is a done job. Now I can go. If, you, if it is not your time, nothing will take you. It is finished. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have run, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. Do you see finish again? This man left when it is finished. Who is that demon that wants to take you before you finish your assignment? I cause that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. You only go when it is finished. You only go when you have finished the race. You will only go when you have kept your faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. God has no pleasure in our deaths. Each time you see people dying, most likely it is not just all about God killing them. No. No. God wants you to live a fulfilled life. Your nets. God wants you to do what? Live a fulfilled life. Your nets. But I show you one thing. There is one wicked soul that is behind many deaths today. Turn with me to the book of John 10.10. 10. Listen to this. Can we read together? It said the thief. Who is the thief? Who is the thief? It said the thief does not come except but to do what? And to do what? And to do what? Hold on. He said the thief come to steal. He does not steal and go. In addition to stealing, he wants to do what? Kill. He will have just steal and kill. He does not see kill and steal alone. In addition to that, he wants to destroy. Satan is the one responsible for all premature death today. Brothers and sisters, make no mistake about it. Satan come to steal. He steals your good health. He steals your peace. He steals your joy. And kills souls. But my question today is, how does Satan kill? Because he does not appear physically. Yes or no? How does he kill? Satan has strategy. Strategy. And one of the most effective ways Satan kills today, let me tell you, is no other than sickness and disease and accident. These three things are the most effective killing system, killing mechanism of Satan. He uses your sickness, he uses your infirmities, accident, and thereabouts. Jesus resurrected Lazarus for one purpose to tell us that premature death is not in Christ. His resurrection from the grave was a proof to let us know that he is not in support with premature deaths. We will leave Sunday, but we will leave when it is finished. Say, I will leave Sunday, but I will leave when it is finished. When it is finished. When it is finished. When it is finished, there are many people today, this thief called the devil, keep projecting sickness and disease in their body. Projecting all kinds of things in their heart. There are many people who die of common headache. Have you ever heard of stories like that? He said, the person complained of my headache and the next morning, my headache, 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 headache. Maybe around 3 a.m. by 7 a.m. he says it's gone. Don't tell me it's just an ordinary sickness. Don't tell me. Never tell me it's an ordinary sickness. There is a ministry of Satan here who comes to kill, 
who comes to destroy. If you are not strong, believers, Satan will use this method to destroy you. Brothers and sisters, crying and shouting there. Let me tell you to be sincere, it was the tears and the cry of people that woke me up. I was fully asleep, well asleep. I fast in my seat and I buckle it backward a little bit and have a peaceful rest. But when the, you know, they complain and the noise of people, Jesus, hey, well, you know, all those kind of noise. <laughs> I said, I know the umbrella we belong to. I think we were three in numbers coming back. None of us were afraid. None. If this airline crash, this plane crash, I will land with my seat on the ground. None of my bone will be broken. I hope you know the one who sent me message. Do you know the God that sent me message? I don't know who Satan have decided to take in that aircraft. But because we are there, sons of the prophets are here. You need to know your God on time. Unless this issue of death, attack and accident. Do you know there are people that cannot drive today because they are afraid of death? I don't want to die. Let somebody drive me. I'm so afraid. I don't drive in the night. I don't drive at day. There are people who don't drive and yet they still have accident in their bedroom and still die. See, he fall down in the room and hit the head on the tie and that was the end. Satan has strategy. Satan has strategy. If you don't know the key that made for longevity, you will be in fear forever. Brothers and sisters, know your God. We are in the end time. Know your what? Know your God. There's a day that do know their God. They shall be strong. Let me tell you the story of the airline. Brothers and sisters, the first time, they land. No way. Second time, they land. No way. We sat there and said, not our portion. Nothing at all. I, Satan, you will not see my tears here. I sat down there and as one of our evangelists, I think the, the older one, came out and bring the anointed water, spread the aircraft, the top time, land successfully, and everybody clapped. It is not our portion. No, 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 no. We are peculiar people. We are choosing generations. Now, they say Satan is moving like a roaming lion looking for who to do what do you know devour means to kill i hope you know that i said satan will never see you <clears throat> make it as a confession to yourself and there is something satan don't have satan does not have fear satan gives you fear but satan does not have what oh don't think satan is afraid go and find out in the bible satan has never been afraid before is so audacious there is something you must know to cast at satan satan only move that i've heard in the bible that satan flee i've never read in my bible that satan was afraid he was not even afraid of jesus but there is something that is in jesus in the apostles in great men of god that when they speak the enemy flee you will not die Amen. your career will not die in the name of jesus christ Amen. let me tell you in just few ways here if we are to go by it one of the ways we live long and we live strong in this earth there is someone that is responsible for that i know you know jesus but I want to tell you today that Jesus is dimensional. Do you know you can say I know this house. But you may not know the department in the house. I hope you know that. Jesus is departmental. I want to show you a department of Jesus. That is responsible. For this long life. You can know. The lamb that was slain, And you will still die. Because that one only forgives sin. I hope you understand. You can know the Savior, and yet He will be saving you 
But what of when it is time for death? Or probably something happened to you. There is Jesus that has been given to us to give us long life. Are you ready to see that Jesus? Are you ready? Are you ready? Turn with me to the book of John. John chapter 11 and verse 25. Let us read. Jesus said to her, I am the word. I am the word and the word. He who believes in me, though he may what? But he shall what? This is the man responsible for long life and living in prosperity. He said, I am the what? The resurrection. If you know Jesus, but you don't know him as the resurrection, you will never stop fearing death. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Anyone that believes in me, whether you die, probably by accident, I tell you there is a guarantee to rise again. There is a guarantee. Do you know Jesus as the resurrection? Do you know Jesus as the resurrection? If you don't know the resurrection and dimension of Jesus, in this fearful time, you will not have courage. Courage come to you when you know Jesus as the resurrection. Courage come when you know this Jesus that is the resurrection and the life. He said, whoever turn to me and believe in me, he shall what? He shall live. Today, I want to bring this Jesus to our midst here. This Jesus, many of you don't know him. I know you know Jesus the Christ, but you don't know Jesus the resurrection. You know Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Do you know this one? This is the secret link to your good health. This is the secret link to your strength and your vitality as far as life is concerned. I assure you, not all believers know this Jesus. Not all believers. Brothers and sisters, if you know this resurrection of Jesus, you will not tolerate sickness. You know what? You know what? This is the Jesus that John the beloved knows. The Bible says, not even an hot oil could destroy him. You may not know him, or you may not need him now. Keep this Jesus in your life. Because times that are coming, you will need to know this Jesus, the resurrection. There are many of us, every week and every month, doctors know you by name. Every time you go to the hospital, they call you by your name. You are here again. It is because you've not known this Jesus, the resurrection and the life. We live long by knowing this Jesus. Let me give you another key. If you want to live long here on earth, are you ready? To live long here on earth, let me show you another scripture. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 27. The fear of the Lord We do what? But the years of the world, the wicked will be what? <laughs> to live long and to live above sickness and accident in this our time. Have the fear of God. Have the what? The fear of God. If you have the fear of God, it's a fear of the Lord will literally prolong your life. No one feared the Lord and died anyhow. Because the fear of the Lord is protection on you. Fear of the Lord does not mean you should be afraid of God. That is, honor him, obey him, have reference to him. If you say, I have fear of God, do you obey God? If you have fear of the Lord... You will what? Obey God. Obedience is the proof of your fear towards God. 
to live long here on earth, brothers and sisters, you must know the welfare dimension of life. Oftentimes here yeah, I tell you, I say life is spiritual. Life is what? Life is what? Oh, life is spiritual. Have you read in your Bible? The Bible says Jesus is with the Father. He is doing what? He is praying for you. If Jesus is praying in heaven, it's already a sign to let you know that there is a warfare here on earth. Jesus defeated Satan and said, it is finished. Yes or no? And still goes to heaven and begins to pray. Why is he still praying for you? Brothers and sisters, if you don't pray, long life is not your portion. Prayerless Christians are Christians who cannot live and fulfill their days here on earth. Weakness in prayer is equal to weakness in life. Oh, listen to me. It's very, very important. Make no mistake about it. Satan is determined to kill, steal, and destroy. It takes your consistency in prayer to live your days here on earth. You are just living your life. Wake up in the morning and say, no, Jesus died on the cross. I am going to live. Who tell you? Even the Jesus that died on the cross is still praying. For him to be praying is already a sign for you that there is a warfare going on. The Bible said the kingdom of God suffered violent. He said only the violent get their portion by prayers. If you are not praying, you cannot win this war. If you are not praying, you cannot live to fulfill your days. If you are not praying, let me tell you, the, <laughs> there are people who say, man of God, do you know, each time I don't pray, nothing happened to me. I'm always okay. Each, each time I start praying now, there will be attack. When you are not praying, do you know what is happening to you in the realm of the spirits? Brothers and sisters, it's dangerous. As you are not praying, it's like a vehicle coming down from the hill. Do you know it's, it's a free road? Satan will never stop you. As long as you are going down, as long as you are going down, he will never stop you. A day coming, just kill you straight. A day comes. And Satan said, take this one. It's, it's done. The vehicle has come down. The way they say pride come before a fall. So also prayerlessness come before death. Do you know one month I, I just wake up and thank Jesus. Jesus, I thank you and go my way. Satan, look at you and smile. You keep going. Don't pray. I hope you know that the greatest humility you can show God is your prayer lifestyle. If you are not praying, it's equal to arrogance to God. Because just as fish is designed to live in water, we are designed to live by prayers. Any fish that comes out of the water is just a matter of time. Give that fish three hours, four hours. What begins to happen to the fish? It's time. So also when you stop praying, thinking that all is of grace, there are many doctrines today that have put Christians in bondage. Grace of, of God is upon us. Let me tell you, even you yourself need to connect by faith to receive the grace. One save is always saved. Has landed many people into grief today. Once you are saved, you are saved forever. Why is Jesus not sitting there clapping for us? He's praying for us. Because Jesus knows that this world is spiritual. There are arrows that move 24 hours. The Bible says, pray with that season. It is very difficult to take a life of a Christian that prays. I tell you the truth. Very difficult to kill a prayerful Christian. <laughs> very difficult. You are very cheap and you are close to grave when you are not praying. That your dream makeup does not make you alive, brothers and sisters. Prayerlessness is closing you to the grave. 
The Bible says in Luke 18 and verse 1, it says, men ought to always pray and not to think. You must pray. Oh, yes, you must pray. I grew up knowing my prophet, Prophet T.B. Joshua, as a man of prayer. I asked myself many times, I said, what is this man praying for again? I think you have everywhere. The whole world know you. You are popular. You are a miracle man. But constantly, he prays. Constantly, he prays. He prays. He prays. Even Jesus, when time of temptation came, he prays. Lord, if it's that we let this cup pass over me. Nevertheless, not my will, let your will be done. And I say, you shall not die. Everybody say amen. But are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying? I know you have been hearing prayer message, but let me tell you, when you are not praying, you are already close to grave. Mm. Simple. Because there are arrows that flies. Arrows! You don't even know the one that come to you. Your prayer becomes an immunity that secure you. You want to sleep? Stay there and say, don't, don't just say I'm tired. The yeah, body is just paining me. I work for money tonight. Don't walk to your grave. No. Stay there. Pray. I am a priest. I saturate this atmosphere with the blood of Jesus. All arrows that fly by night. Roaming lion looking for who to devour. I send fire around my territory. I often tell you. <laughs> That a king is asleep does not mean he's a lesser king. Hey, can you attack a king because he went to sleep? You say we will kidnap the king. No. Do you know how many securities are around the palace? You are destroying yourself if you don't pray. It's self-destruction. There is no way you can fulfill destiny without prayer. We are in end time. Let me tell you the truth. I want you to know the welfare dimension of prayer. Life is spiritual. Business is spiritual. Career is spiritual. Everything you say is spiritual. Good health you are saying is spiritual. Let me show you a dangerous thing that happens when you don't pray. Acts chapter 12 and verse 1. It says, now about that time, Herod the king stretch his hand to arouse some of the what the church then he killed what he killed what james the brother of who with what i hope you know that the person that is killed now is apostle is he an apostle james is killed because of carelessness because they don't know the welfare dimension even a pastor can die with her prayer. Don't let people celebrate your grace to grave. Say, oh, you are a mighty man. Say what you are doing. My friend, pray. Because you can be dying and still be used by God. Pray. You need prayer yourself. It is good to say, man of God, pray for me, pray for me. Pray for me, pray for me. All over the world has led many people into his grave today. There are many people in the grave today because they were looking for who to pray for them and they never learn that life is a warfare. Life is a battleground. Let us continue our reading. Verse 39. It says, And because he saw that he pleased the what? He proceeded further to seize who? Peter also. So first apostle has been killed. Now they say, let us kill their coordinator now. Who is their coordinator? Peter. Since they were careless. <laughs> let me tell you, there are many people today, maybe they have five, six children. Satan has taken two. And they say, ah, two die, men four. I've seen family like that. They say, how many are you in your family? They say, we are six, but two die. I say, don't count them. How many are you? Say, we are four now. Make no mistake about it. It is not only two Satan want to take. Satan want to take all. He has taken two. It is for you to wake up. I say no. Somebody died two years ago. You went for burial. 
After burial, come back again. Next one year, someone die. You go again, someone die. Say we were 10 in number before. We are now six. It's not six. Satan is still targeting the next person. You must wake up and stand your ground and say, no, it is not my portion. I know something about death. Give us the scripture again. It says, because he pleases the Jew, he proceeds further to seize Peter also. Now, let us read. Now, it was during the days of unliving bread. So, when he has arrested him, he put him in where? And deliver him to what? Four squads of soldiers to keep him. Intending to bring him before the people. After, after, okay, now let us read verse 5. Peter was therefore kept in where? But constant prayer, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. The church wake up and say, we can't lose Peter again. We have lose James. Are you still sleeping? You have lose your business. Now your body, you are feeling something is moving in your body. And you are sitting, you are joking about it. He said, man of God, nothing is working. My business is not working. My car is not working. My children, everybody's sick. Are you sleeping? Satan will take more. If you don't wake up and pray. Satan killed Apostle James and realized that the church did not wake up. He came back and said, this time, let me take Peter. Ah, the church said, no. If the head, the rock on which Jesus built his church is killed, something will happen. He said, constant prayer. Constant prayer. We are made by the church. Who is sleeping there? And you are declaring, I want to live long. I want to be old. I want to be matured. I have never seen Satan apologizing and say i have done enough let me go back never never have you ever seen a picture of satan kneeling down and begging have you determined man determined to steal determined to kill determined to destroy and you that they want to kill and steal and destroy and you are just there now one day you go better and satan say continue expecting it you must know the welfare dimension if you must live long here. Yeah. Confession is part of it. But let me tell you the truth. You must know this reality. Men must wage war. Don't live your life intellectually. You will not live long. If you live your life socially, you will not live long. If you live your life physically, you are already dead. Say, I will pray. Say, I will not sleep. I will pray. Pray, brothers and sisters. You must pray. If you want to live long, I show you the key to live long. You must pray. You must wage war against the kingdom of darkness. At all time. At all time. Some of you in a week, you will not pray. Check yourself. If God open your eyes to see where you are. There are many people who are almost dead. Almost. Satan press any button, you can't escape it. This is the reason why you see it today. Do you know that when Satan wants to kill someone, there are also innocent souls that follow them. Probably by accident. Have you noticed that? If you are prayerful, you forget your key at home and you go back and that bus will move, you will not be part of it. That is what prayer does to you. You get there and you say, ah! What is wrong? Okay, let me get something and come back. They say the vehicle have moved. Let it move because it is not your time to die. But when you are not prayerful, you even fight and enter. It's my seat. It's my seat. Shift for me. And not knowing that is the seat to hell. Prayerlessness have killed many people today. Don't joke with your life. If you are from Aquaibum, don't even joke with your life. 
there is territorial forces that will not allow men and women in case you don't know this is your territory there is slavery here there is spirit that makes men to be slave to men if you must eat here you must be a servant to another man the spirit here that many young people who are talented you will never be helped they want you to be a slave before you eat your daily bread if you don't pray you can't break through if you break through your own demon there is a territorial force territorial spirit you must fight there are spirit that don't want people to rise you just wake up and say but i'm innocent we are christian it's not about your christianity you are from a region that no one rise can anything go come out of nazareth it is not about jesus mary and joseph family it is about the nazareth now no nazareth can do anything good you come out from that region and you are laughing playing with your christianity not praying how do you want to last i want to live long do you know that there are people today in their family everybody live long but they are always poor always poor never nobody can buy a shoe shoe nobody have good clothes all the clothes they have they dash them somebody have to pity them to give them they give you food they give you everything nobody have ever get anything and anyone that said i want to become rich i want to go to school the demon will say now you are defiling the laws of these territories nobody rise here as long as you are poor they will let you to be alive but when you want to be rich they say we kill you and in that kind of territory you don't pray he said i will go and have a good shop in the town who tell you it takes power to do business and succeed it takes power to be an engineer it takes power to do anything here and succeed wake up brothers and sisters to live long you must wake up there are spirit that does not want you to wake up the bible say i lay down and i sleep and i wake up for the lord do what sustains me to live long you must wake up and to wake up is to pray because there are spirit that want to choke them to death don't play with your life like that living without prayer is moving closer to the grave day by day living without prayer is moving closer to the grave come back come back come back wake up and live long wake up and live long prayer is for men not for men of god brothers and sisters you have no idea activities need prayer not say is it my prayer that will make it work just pray add your own we pray the women in this church they pray the men in this church they pray the the youth in this church they pray they are prayer session prayer everywhere whether it's from your mouth or your heart just pray just pray 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 to live long pray to stand strong pray 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 this is not just a ritual please pray you cannot live long if you don't pray i know you'll be hearing prayer maybe no man of god i'm not, I'm not really looking for breakthrough i'm not god has helped me you know god is helping me small small now god is helping you small small you better pray you better pray they say anything close to jesus yeah, jesus means breakthrough anything that is connected to breakthrough receives what have you not heard that people receive promotion in their office and now their temperature is going up now my salary have increased my pressure is increasing that is an attack because you are not praying you are there laughing that the money have increased so i deserve it i deserve it i work for this company you deserve it okay you deserve the proper pressure too if you don't pray prayer addicts things out of your life our life is like a farm i hope you know that if you don't plant something there something will still grow 
They call those things unwanted plans. If you don't pray, other things will come up. He said, Why men slept? The enemy came and plant something you don't want. The farmer plant their own. But when the farmer was sleeping, enemy came to plant. There are many things that are not supposed to be in your life because you were not praying. So the enemy gave you. Yes or no? Did they make choice? Have you seen a blind man say that one is not good? Give me the next one. That means the man is not blind. Blind people don't have choice. You make their choice for them. So you are spiritually blind when you don't pray. Satan make your choice for you. Since you don't know how to pray. Prayer brings clarity. Prayer brings sensitivity. There are many of you that have lost things today because you are not praying. Because if you were praying, God will begin to give you sign to tell you that that is danger. That is danger. And let me tell you one thing. There is level you can pray to. Can I have someone here? Come, my brother. There is level you can pray to. Level you can pray to. As you are here now, something wants to happen. And yet you refuse. You can be pushed by the spirits. Physically, a force move you. That is power of prayer. That is, you are now communicating with God. Something wants to happen, but because you are not getting it on time, the, the force come, shifts you for the next place. And you'll be like, wow. This, is, this, this was where I was staying. What happened? You are a prayerful man. What happened? You are in tune with God. But let me tell you, if you are spiritually dead, it will knock you over and over again. Over and over again. It will destroy you. When you are not praying, it's just like a prayer in the medical terms. I can say antibiotics that fight germs in your body. Yes or no? So there are certain germs in our body that over the times that you are supposed to be taking this thing, there are food that are antibiotics, yes or no? Food, not just drugs. Food, drugs, medication. At least in, in three months, four months, six months, you have to take in those things to help you. Maybe warm the warming and all that things. They are all antibiotics. I hope you understand. So also prayer. If you don't take care of those things as healthy as you are, you'll be messed up someday. Yes or no? Prayer helps you to keep fit. Help you to keep fit. Please pray. Pray. I'm bringing this reason why you need to pray. You cannot live long. I know many of you know important of prayer. You must pray as a Christian. You must know. You cannot live long if you don't pray. So you should know why you should pray now. You will not live long. Long life is given to prayer warriors. The kingdom suffered violent. Satan is still making attempt to Jesus today. Is he highly determined? Satan still wants to dethrone Jesus. Who are you that you will not dethrone? Who are you? Satan has full hatred for Jesus. You think he will like you? He will love you? Or he will leave you? Which one? He hates Jesus as we are talking now. And I hope you know that Satan is not dead. Do you think he's dead? Make, if you think he's dead, wake up. Let me show you that he's not dead. When they start praying now, you start seeing him being cast out of people. He has shared and multiplied himself into people's lives. Causing sickness and disease. Causing pain. Causing doors to be closed. Wake up and live long. May God bless you in Jesus' name.